Hi, my name's Ski Oakenfall, and today I'm going to be deconstructing Dua Lipa's Don't Start Now. It's great to be back to do another deconstruction. And this time we're going to be looking at this epic track by Dua Lipa, Don't Start Now. Let's just start off with a few fun facts. This track's written by Caroline Aylin, Emily Warren and Ian Kirkpatrick, and produced by Ian Kirkpatrick as well. Vocals by Dua Lipa, of course. Came out on the 27th of March 2020 on the label Warner. And it's from her album Future Nostalgia. Style-wise, uh, I would say it's kind of new disco, pop. It's got a bit of that kind of 90s house to it as well. And yeah, it's got a brilliant kind of funk bass line. Performance-wise, it got to number two in the UK and actually number one in the US dance charts. So I'm using Ableton Live here. This is actually Live 11 and Push 2. And what I'm gonna do is going to recreate as many parts as possible using Ableton Live. So we're gonna start off with the drums. Um, and I've got a drum rack here. We've got a kick drum, two snares here, which I'm gonna layer up. Actually three claps, which I'm gonna layer up as well. They've got a tom-tom, a hi-hat, close hi-hat, a crash, this, which is uh, a kind of woodblock cowbell, which is a feature of the track, and then this kind of electro tom. So let me just show you the Tal Uno, which is playing that electro tom sound. Love it. Okay, so let's record this in. I'm gonna put the metronome on. I've got record quantize on as well. There we go, take the metronome off. So I'm playing those two snares together, lay it up. Um, next I'm going to just play these claps, just the two of them. There we go. And then I'm gonna add in a hi-hat. Okay, so we've got our two bar pattern. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double that twice to create an eight bar loop. And I'm gonna put in some drum fills, some snare fills. So if I just take bars three and four and just take this sound here, and I'm just gonna add one in there. Just listen to what that's gonna sound like. Great, and then I'm gonna to go to bars seven and eight and do the same thing, but just add one extra snare in. And then I'm gonna put in this electro tom. There we go. And then this tom as well. Great, so let's go back to an eight bar loop. And there's one final sound to put in, which is this crash. And I'm just gonna put that in there. Okay, so we've got the basic beat. I'm now gonna go over to session view and I'm gonna duplicate that clip down to some different scenes here and the scenes are gonna enable us to actually build up the arrangement. So you'll see how that gets put together. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. Let's go to uh, one other scene here which, where there's a, a different drum pattern, and this is very, very simple. It's just a clap. And for this, I'm actually gonna use all three claps. So let's record this in. There we go. We've got our clips there, two different clips, and I can either just flick between them by actually triggering the clip, or I can actually trigger the whole scene from the right-hand side here. Great, so that's the drums done. We're now gonna go over to the piano, and we're gonna look at a little bit of music theory. So I'm gonna bring up my VMPK, which is the virtual keyboard, and also the chord chart here as well. And I've got a keyboard, a real keyboard. When we do these deconstructions, one of the first things I look for is the key signature, because this is going to dictate what notes are being played in the track. So this is actually in B minor, and if I play those notes of the scale, we have B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. Now there are two main chord sequences in this track. We have this kind of big piano section. These chords are B minor seven, that's the second inversion. Just very quickly about inversions. Uh, if we just play a triad on the B, um, this is the root position. If we then take that bottom B, take it up, we have the first inversion. Then we take the D, take that up, we have the second inversion. And we've also got this A in here as well, which gives us the B minor seven. 
And you can see under these chords, we've got the yellow Roman numerals, and they dictate the chords based on the actual number of the note on the scale. So this is the one chord, B minor seven. Then we go to the D chord. So the first inversion in the right hand is the three chord. And then rather than going straight to the next chord, it actually has the passing chord there, going to the E minor seven, and that's the four chord. F sharp minor seven, five chord. G major seven, and that's the sixth chord. So then we have the verse section, and also the chorus as well. So this starts off on the four chord, which is an E minor seven, then going to the one chord, B minor seven second inversion, G major, which is the sixth chord, D, A, so that's three, seven. Um, that's not actually played on the piano, that's just played on the bass, and then there's a pad that comes in later on. So we'll look at that in a minute. So let's record that piano section in. Um, I'm just going to put the metronome on, just going to check. This is going to be coming in on the first scene, and then I'll copy that down as well. So let's record that in. There we go. Great, and I'm going to duplicate that down to the fourth scene here, where, that, where I put that clap in. Now we're going to go over to the bass. This is where we bring in the second chord sequence, and uh, we're just going to play the root notes of those chords uh, on the bass. So E, B, G, D, A. So I'm just going to hide that for the moment, uh, the chords. And let's just look at the sound that I'm using here. I actually read an interview with Ian Kirkpatrick, the producer, and he actually cited this very sound, which is uh, a Native Instruments contact sound. It's the Scarby MM bass. As far as I'm aware, this is the actual sound he used. It's a really great sort of funky sound. So let's record in uh, that bass line. pretty funky. Great, so I'm going to duplicate that down, that clip down to the different scenes. Apart from the one where we put the piano and the clap in, I'll just bring up the chords just to remind you uh, what they are. There we go. We're just going to play the root notes of these piano chords. B, D, D, E, F sharp, G. We're now going to uh, add a synth bass part, and this isn't actually playing a different part, it's actually um, completely mirroring the bass line, um, but it just adds a kind of another layer and uh, a texture in the verse, just to kind of move things along a bit. And we're using uh, the Arturia Mini Moog for this. And all I need to do for this is I can just duplicate across, so horizontally, uh, and I'm going to copy that over there and on that uh, scene there as well. That's without it. So you can hear it really kind of adds something. Okay, so moving on now to the next part, and this is a pad sound, and for this I'm returning back to the Tal Uno LX. So let me just bring that up so you can see what it is. And this is a really nice pad sound. And this is going to come in, first of all, in this section. And it's literally just going to play these piano chords exactly the same. So I could copy those over, but this time I'm actually going to play them in. And it just really kind of adds some, you know, width to the to the track. I'm just going to check the quantizers on. Yep, that's quantized. That also comes in again on using those other chords on 
this bass line. So let's record that in. There we go. So the next part uh, is another contact sound. And again, Ian Kirkpatrick uh, cited this sound. This is from the Session Strings 2 or Session Pro 2. And what's playing here is this kind of uh, rising string part. You have to be careful when I'm playing this because uh, if, I, if I hit the top note first, it goes down, so I have to be careful by hitting the bottom note first. Cool, so let's, let's put that part in. Okay, so for the next part, we've got this really nice kind of bubbling synth part. I actually managed to find this off a live performance. It's the start of a live performance. I'll just play it to you now. So it sounds like we've got a vocal sample there and also a nice little kind of arpeggio going underneath. What I actually did was uh, I took just the vocal sample from that and I'll just put it on there. I've kind of looped it a little bit, just so there's a bit of a tail. And then I've also put an echo on it, and this gives it a real you know, rhythmic uh, element, or adds to the rhythmic element. Um, and then also an auto pan as well. So let's record that part in first. Now let's look at the arpeggio part. I've just got uh, an Ableton uh, analog sound for this. I've just got some EQ just rolling off some of the bottom end uh, and the echo and some reverb as well. And I'm actually going to use the uh, step sequencer to add this part in. First of all, I'm just gonna uh, record in uh, a blank clip. And I'm just going to uh, add these parts in. Um, I've actually got the scale set to B minor. So this is uh, allowing me to put the correct notes in. That's the first half. And then the second half. There we go, you can see them there. Now one thing that you might have noticed when I played the original riff is that uh, uh, that arpeggio is just getting louder and louder. So what we can put is some uh, clip automation in for that. Because this is just a one bar loop, um, I'm going to make this uh, a four and an eight bar loop actually. And I'm gonna put, uh, make this an unlinked loop. So it's just gonna keep that MIDI pattern, but it's going to allow me to add automation just across eight bars of that clip. So we've got mixer, we've got track volume here. So let's just click there, click down here as well, and let's uh, listen to that and see what it sounds like. You can hear it getting louder. Okay, so let's just bring in some of these other elements. Piano. And then a clap. Great, so we've got one more musical part to put in, and uh, I like to refer to this as the kind of the Daft Punk guitar. Sounds a bit like music sounds better with you. Maybe that was the original influence. So um, I'm just recreating this again with another contact sound. This is just one of the, uh, from the factory library. This is just the guitar. And I've got some effects on it. Um, I've just got a flanger. So let's just record that uh, onto this scene.
Great, so we've got all the kind of key musical elements. There are obviously some other sounds and effects that are going on, but I'm just gonna leave it at that for the moment. Now, uh, as is traditional, it's always great to hear this with the a cappella. So I've managed to find this. It's quite readily available. Um, sometimes labels make this available for remixes. And it's actually really useful from a production point of view because you can actually get some insight into the vocal processing and the effects that they use. So this is the verse. Eighty, crazy, thinking about the way I was, did the heartbreak change me? So what's interesting, if we listen to the chorus, if you don't want to see, well, don't come out. You can actually hear that don't side chain. About me now. Let's have a listen to this all the way through. And I'm going to actually play in live, or attempt to play in live, uh, the cowbell sound, or woodblock, whatever you like to call it, because I didn't actually program that in. So let's have a listen to Don't Start Now from the top. If you don't There we go. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, insight into this track. I look forward to coming back and see you very soon. Bye.